Hi everybody, this is Dr. K. In this case of the week, we're going to talk about Lawrence. The story of Lawrence is really sad. It's actually one of my patients who ended up developing cancer and ultimately needed chemotherapy and, and surgery and all kinds of awful things. Now, once Lawrence was done with all of these things, and it was so heart-wrenching to see him and the family have to go through this, the family came back to me and they're like, our kid is not the same. Lawrence can't pay attention. Lawrence is moody. Lawrence's you know, learning capacity is gone. Lawrence has all kinds of things where now he's uber sensitive to everything and won't can't tolerate tags and can't do this. And you know, it was like Lawrence's entire system, his nervous system especially was just really a wreck. And you know what? God bless the oncologists because they saved his life. You know, they, they did everything they had to do to make sure that that cancer is gone. And there's no, I mean, this isn't a discussion of, of chemo or cancer treatments because God bless them. They, they saved his life, no doubt. It's what happens afterwards. And it's it's all of the things that show up that we don't oftentimes don't even know what to make of. And, you know, when I started talking to the family, I was like, so tell me more. How is Lawrence doing now? Because Lawrence before this was this super smart, super capable, athletic child who was strong, balanced, happy. I mean, just really in pristine health in every regard you can possibly imagine. And of course, this cancer diagnosis just came out of left field and left everyone devastated. I mean, I was devastated for them. But Lawrence wasn't the same child afterwards. His concentration, his focus, his learning, his executive memory or executive functioning, which is basically processing of information, recalling of information, being able to absorb information and do something with it, all of that was shot. Lawrence also had all of these sensory things that he never had before. And he was just irritable and crabby and just reactive and just completely out of sorts and out of balance. And the family's like, what do we do? Do we get psychoeducational testing? Do we get him tested? Because now maybe he has a learning disability. Is he ADHD? Like, what do we do? So I sat down and we started breaking down what was going on. And the very first thing was that, you know, in the midst of this poor kid and their family going through chemo, his diet had completely changed. He used to be a great eater and was eating vegetables and super clean diet that was low in gluten and dairy and sugar and, you know, clean proteins. And basically, because when he was getting chemo, he couldn't taste anything. What did the family give him? Just carbs and, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and crackers and things that he would actually want to eat because nothing else was palatable to him. And, you know, in the midst of it, like I was like, do what you have to do, do what you have to do, take care of him. But, you know, afterwards, I was like, you know, probably all this gluten and sugar and carbs are not really helping him. And the mom's like, well, what do we do? I'm like, we could do testing. She's like, just tell me what to do. I was like, okay, clean up his diet, get rid of the excess sugar for sure. Reduce the gluten, reduce the dairy. You don't have to cut it out. Just reduce it, balance it out, bring in the vegetables, bring in the clean proteins, bring in some fish. And they did that. But we took it a step further. We also did some anti-inflammatories for the gut. I, I mentioned to you before these immune globulins, these colostrum-based products that are widely available. We used some of them. We used some probiotics. We did this multivitamin uh, that I mentioned before, Neuro Needs, that basically supports the mitochondria because what is the one system that gets heavily impacted by chemotherapy? The mitochondria, Right chemotherapeutics in the process of destroying all these cancer cells also cause mitochondrial damage. And this is actually in the literature. So we did some mitochondrial support. We did some things to boost her energy. I gave some adrenal support, did lots of fish oils, lots of healthy fats. And I basically just let them be for two months. And then I checked in with them afterwards. I was like, so how is Lawrence doing? And they're like, great. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, and I was prepared for us to need to do this therapy and that therapy. Like I, I had already lined up all of these backup options because I wasn't even sure if this was going to do the trick. They're like, he's great. I'm like, he's great. They're like, yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah. So what about the attention pumps? 
it's great. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, like he's learning like he used to before and his memory is back and he's paying attention and he's processing and he's remembering stuff and understanding stuff. I'm like, what? Yeah. Okay, well, what about the sensory things? They're gone. I'm like, what? And it turns out that when we have inflammation, inflammation itself actually changes part of the brain's processing pathways. And that exacerbates some of the sensory issues that we see in kids. And I, I see this often where kids have mild sensory issues. Something causes their entire nervous system to get inflamed and mild sensory issues suddenly become extraordinary sensory issues. But it was even beyond that because Lawrence went from being this super balanced, happy kid prior to the chemo to becoming this kid that was reactive and moody and dysregulated and just off. So I asked the mom, I'm like, so how are his behavioral issues? Like what happened to the moodiness? What happened to all of these things? They're gone. What? They're gone. Really? Yeah. And, you know, all of this is a testament to what is possible when we line up the right treatments for the right child. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, I, I don't deserve much of the credit at all. It's really that family, that mom, that put in all of these hours of hard work. And they changed his diet. And they got Lawrence, even when he didn't want to, to take the supplements. And they did the grind. They did the work. And at the end of the day, th their efforts paid off because Lawrence was back to his healthy, robust, brilliant, capable self. And I'm sure there are a lot of you families out there that are looking and they're like, what is going on with my kid? Why is my kid not able to learn? Why is my kid not able to control themselves? Why is my kid just falling apart? These things are not coincidental. These things are not accidental. These things are not just happening because they're happening there are reasons there are physiological reasons and these are our reasons that we can identify these are reasons that we can easily easily treat once we know what the heck is going on and that's the whole purpose of these discussions for us to start opening the doors of understanding and opening our eyes to what's possible because I don't want this information to just be a little private thing we do in my clinic. This, this isn't something that is, is a secret that I want to keep to myself. These are things that every family should have access to. And heavens forbid if there's any family out there whose child has had to go through, through chemotherapy and their brain just went through the blender, share this with them. Because you know what? A little supplementation, a little cleanup and diet, some extra healthy fats, some gut support can go such a long way. And I hope that together we can bring this kind of understanding into the forefront of everyone's mind. And if there is any child out there that's suffering from any kind of neurocognitive behavioral, behavioral or learning issue, that this becomes part of what we all talk about. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our community. And thank you for sharing this information with all of the people that you know out there. Be well. This is Dr. K. Bye-bye.